<laughs> Yo, what is up, knights? E just Rick here, and today I want to introduce to you guys part one of what will be a two-part series covering all the various systems that exist in DFO that can be used on your 12 basic slots of equipment. In this one, we'll exclusively cover the system for improving the gear that you already have. In the next, we'll cover all the other systems for creating, repurposing, and transferring gears that also exist as well. On the screen, I've put the topics that we will be discussing. If you don't see what you're looking for, it'll most likely be covered in that other video. Now, to avoid this video being insanely long, I just want to let you guys know that I will be only giving a brief rundown of each system and what it's used for. If you want more detail, well, at least you've got a starting point. But without further ado, let's go! Reinforcement is a system that can be performed at Kiri and Hendon Mirror or in the Guild Hall and applies to all gear that isn't cursed or a product of wisdom. It'll simply cost you gold and some clear cube fragments, but it's a system that gets expensive rather quickly. Depending on what slot you decide to reinforce, you will get the following effects. Now, if I'm being honest though, defensive stats are pretty much useless in this game, and so for all non-buffer characters, you primarily want to be looking here at your weapon and earring. All non-buffer characters need to reinforce their earrings to at least plus 10 for the extra primary damage stats, and all percentage damage characters need to reinforce their weapon to at least plus 11, preferably plus 12 if you can manage, for the extra physical or magic attack. If you're a fixed damage character, reinforcing the weapon will not improve your damage in any way, since it doesn't give any independent attack, so be careful if you don't want to look like a buffoon. You might notice that if you look at the charts that the weapon has a different safe point than all of the other slots, being completely safe all the way up until plus 12 instead of 10. If you fail reinforcement past its safe point, the equipment will be permanently destroyed, so be careful there. Now some items that are going to help you out in reinforcement. Kiri's reinforcement proficiency formula is a consumable that can be crafted via the alchemy profession and can be used to temporarily increase your success chance of reinforcement. You also have a title that can be earned by navigating here through your titles. Either of these two titles here will increase your success chance. And lastly, if you're feeling brave and want to attempt a reinforcement past its safe point, you should always have the reinforcement protection ticket. If you do happen to fail, it will consume this ticket and reset your reinforcement rate back to zero instead of having the equipment break outright. The last thing that I want to mention about reinforcement is that you can indeed perform this task at another NPC, Jonathan. Surprisingly, you only need Terranium to perform this, however, he has a strict limitation of only being able to process up to level 95 equipment. The Terranium cost does get a little excessive though, and I don't necessarily do it myself, but just want to let you know it is possible. The NPC that manages amplification is Klonter here in the Dark Elf Post. You'll go to him to get various items related to the system as well as performing amplification itself. Now, the amplification system trips a lot of people up, but for all intents and purposes, it's exactly the same as reinforcement, albeit with one crucial change. This pink stat right here, whose potency scales with the amplification level. As you can see, it can be one of the four base stats, Strength, Int, Vite, or Spirit. All other benefits of amplification are exactly the same as reinforcement, and thus makes amplification straight up better than reinforcement in every conceivable way. There is a catch though. It's single-handedly the most expensive thing that you can do in DFO. Straight up. Nothing even comes close, and it's because you'll need an absurd amount of crystallized chaos, which is a fancy way of saying clear cubes, since Klonter trades them at 1000 a pop. In other words, this means that you must take extreme caution when dealing with amplification. Do not do it for crucial slots that require high levels of reinforcement. Again, for percentage damage characters, that's your weapon and earring, and for fixed damage characters, that's just your earrings only. Now that being said, aside from those crucial considerations, I would still highly recommend abusing the amplification system. As already mentioned, defensive stats are not all that useful in DFO, and thus it's beneficial to amplify your non-important gear slots with the pink raw stats. This is especially true for buffer type characters who get increased buffing potency with higher raw stats. And while I did say 
say that amplification is incredibly expensive, it really is only the case at high levels of amplification. Taking a look at the table, all equipment including the weapon have safe points at plus 10, but additionally at the 8, 9, and 10 attempts, they will reset all the way back to zero upon failure. And it's this resetting on top of the increasing crystallized chaos cost that makes this system so expensive. If you want a lot of extra raw stats, but don't want to break the bank, settle for amp gear that is less than plus eight. Now, all of what I just said seems kind of nice, but you cannot simply choose to begin amplifying your gear. You must first have a curse applied onto it. This is something that can occur randomly whenever the gear drops as indicated by this ominous message in red here. You cannot equip the gear until the curse is dealt with. And in that regard, you have two options. You can extinguish the curse by use of an item called the Otherverse Energy Extinguishers, which is sold in the auction hall or the Sarah shop. Doing so will merely remove the curse outright, and then it becomes standard gear subject to the reinforcement system. If you want the pink stat though, you can alternatively use an Otherverse Purification Scroll that is crafted via a recipe in Clonter's shop in order to apply a random pink stat onto your gear. From this point forward, this gear is considered cursed and can no longer be reinforced. It can only only be amplified at Clonter. If you don't like the pink stat that you get, you can use the conversion spell, which is also crafted at Clonter, which can change the pink stat into any one of your choosing. Be careful though, this item suspiciously only works on plus zero amplified items, so you've got to do it right away. Both of the recipes to craft the aforementioned items at Clonter will require items that are exclusively sold at another NPC, Jonathan, here in the Metro Center, and all of his items are looking for Terranium, an item I just farming only in the Disaster Sector 3 level of Harlem. Complicated, yeah, I know. Say you have gear that isn't cursed, but you still want to amplify it. Well, in that case, you can always use a Grimoire item. They are rarely given in events, but most likely from things like packages and lost treasures. They come in different rarities, but effectively just apply the pink stat of your choosing directly onto a gear at a randomized amplification level. There is one final method that you can use to get cursed gears, and it involves transferring the curse from another gear by using of the engraving and inheriting system, but we'll cover those later in the video. If you've made a grave mistake, such as amplifying a weapon on a percentage damage character, and decide that you no longer want to deal with it, you can correct this error by use of the pure golden extinguisher that sold for a hefty 2,000 mileage in the mileage shop. This item will return the cursed gear into a normal one fit for reinforcement again. Now, refinement can be performed at June the Blacksmith in Shonen, or the refinement machine in the Guild Hall. It's a system that can only be performed on weapons and is designed to increase the fixed damage and exorcism of the weapon. For this reason, it's only really useful on fixed damage characters and otherwise is quite useless on others aside from its aesthetic yellow glow. Refinement can be done in conjunction with reinforcement or amplification with no conflict, although because both systems will increase your exorcism to some extent, only the one that gives the highest value of exorcism will be counted. For this reason, you will often see that fixed damage characters will choose to amplify their weapon, because while the reinforcement stat doesn't help to increase their damage, the pink raw stat sure does. The max refinement level of a weapon is currently plus 8, and the unique thing about this system is that it only requires one item, powerful energy, a resource that can be farmed in a slew of different ways. It's for this reason that many veterans commonly suggest newbies to create a fixed damage character as their first. It's relatively a whole lot cheaper to refine a weapon instead of reinforcing it like a percentage damage character would. Reinforcement takes a lot of gold, refining just takes a lot of time. I've put on the screen all the means that I personally use to get powerful energies from highest to lowest priority. Make sure to capitalize on everything that you can to accelerate this process though. The next system that I want to talk about is enchantment. This time there isn't necessarily an NPC that helps you with enchantment, instead being a profession that can be learned by any player in the game. You can either have an enchanter on your account to assist yourself, or merely utilize someone else's enchanter profession shop which are usually roosted in high density channels. Now if you were to look at someone's gear, enchantment is what provides this green stat here. It can be applied to all 12 standard slots of gear and those stats come from a monster card or bead. Now for all intents and purposes, monster cards and beads are functionally the same, as they are both means of providing this green enchantment stat. 
monster cards must be applied onto gear via an enchanter profession shop, whereas beads are consumables that can be made by enchanters that can apply the enchantment directly. Beads are also generally the form that you'll find them from events and places like pandemonium meeting. The slot of the gear itself will determine what types of enchantments can go on that gear, and they come in varying rarities and potencies. You can see the cards and what stats they provide here in Diophopedia. But which enchantment should you get? Well, just take it from me, forget about all the potential stats and just listen. This is what you should look for in your enchantments. First, let's look at the deeps and synergy characters. These slots right here are designed for your critical hit rate. You should always be shooting for 100% crit, but the amount of extra crit that you need will solely depend on your class whether it be their passives, active skills, or buffs. Now these slots right here are for your elemental damage. Generally, you'll stick to one and stack it as high as you can. This is huge damage right here, and thus they can get pretty expensive. These slots right here are for your primary damage stat, whether that be physical, magic, or independent damage, PMI for short. In airing well, there's only a few cards that apply and they all increase your raw stats. It's basically helpful for everyone in the game. Now for buffers, it's a little bit different. Since they are only concerned with increasing their raw stats to make their buffs more potent, so they're going to be looking for different enchants. I put Male Crusader on the top, and on the bottom I put Female Crusader and Enchantress. Now for all buffers, they want the raw stats on their accessories and special equipments. For Male Crusader, he can get his choice of Fight or Spirit from the shoulder, belt, and shoes. And for Female Crusader and Enchantress, they can get high levels of int on their weapon, top and bottom. Lastly, if you're really trying to optimize your buff speed, Male Crusader can get cast speed on his weapon, whereas Female Crusader and Enchantress can get it on their shoulder. Now, I can't stress this enough because some people seem to think otherwise. Your enchantments are not optional in the end game. You need to optimize your gear to ensure that you won't be a sandbag in end game parties. The auction hall sells some decent enchants for cheap and or you can farm them yourself in a ton of different areas, including but not limited to the following. All right, the next system that we're going to talk about is retexturing, which is accomplished at the Strawberry Nose Della NPC here in Harlem. Retexturing is a system that is exclusive to your five slots of armors only, and what it will do is allow you to change your armor mastery that is inherently on the gear into any other one of your choosing. This is particularly useful because all characters in DFO receive extra stats for equipping armor that coincides with their particular armor mastery. For instance, cloth classes like Soulbender and Nin Master get more cast speed and int for wearing cloth armor over any other armor type. If you play a buffer type character, their buff options only appear if your armor is of the plate mastery, which is an extremely important note about them. Having the correct armor mastery is also necessary for certain sets of gear that only work within one armor mastery. For instance, the level 100 legendary armor sets only compose a completed set if their armor masteries are the same among all pieces. Fact of the matter is, retexturing is something that should always be done to ensure that you're utilizing the gear to the fullest and getting the most stats that you can from it. I have evidence that I'll leave in the description below showing just how much extra damage that you can lose when you don't bother with retexturing. The item required for the process are sold in the auction hall as well as directly crafted from Della herself. Additionally, you'll simply need some gold and a legendary soul, and if you're doing 5 plus 5, then you should have plenty of those. The last two gearing improvements that I want to talk about are both performed at the NPC Loton in the West Coast. Both of them are very similar, but first I'll talk about engraving. Engraving is a means of transferring any and all of your gear improvements from your level 95 epic gear over to any level 100 gear. Again, I repeat, this only works on level 95 epic gear, that being Harlem epics, Tabor's epics, and the upgrades provided by Fiend War and Prey. If you've performed any of the aforementioned improvements on any of these gears, you can use engraving to put those improvements onto a level 100 cap gear of the same slot and type. For instance, a level 95 epic shoulder into a level 100 legendary shoulder, like so. You will always need 50 of an item called a Light, but you will also need a certain amount of engraving stones that is determined on the reinforcement, amplification, and or refinement level of the gear that you want to engrave over. You can get engraving stones at low time himself, but it will require that you transfer items that you farm from the Guide of Wisdom. Luckily, those items are account bound. Keep in mind that if the improvements that you're trying to bring over don't exceed the cost of the 50 Aeolites, then it's obviously not worth wasting them on engraving in the first place. Lastly, there is Inheriting, again also performed at Loton. Now this feature 
feature works almost exactly like the engraving system, except that it only applies between level 100 gears of the same slot and type. Any gear and any rarity can be used for this as long as it's level 100, and the only cost it's going to be is that 50 Aeolite again. And I'm sure you're already wondering how these systems can be abused, so let me make a few suggestions. Because Cursed Gear is a completely random occurrence that happens when a gear is dropped, both level 95 and level 100 epics can be used for that purpose. You can engrave or inherit that curse as you see fit in order to eventually get your entire gear set cursed if you so choose. Or how about this? I got this one from Locke. Let's say that you have a bunch of powerful energies that you farmed up on an alt. You can refine a level 100 unique weapon on that alt and then use the transcendent system, which I'll talk about in the next video, to transfer it over to the desired character and then simply inherit that refinement over to the desired gear. I mean, it goes without saying the possibilities are endless here now there is one last gear improvement system that is kind of separate from all the others and that is modification which is again performed by kiri here in hendon mir modification is a system that can only be performed on a very particular subgroup of level 100 epics these epics are called the product of wisdom and you've probably seen them a lot while you've been farming the guide of wisdom product of wisdoms are special in that if they drop outright they are generally tradable in the auction hall making them the only epics that have that distinction, though you can also craft some of them from things like Oculus Hard Mode. Anyway, unlike most of the other gear in this game, Product of Wisdoms cannot be reinforced or amplified. Instead, they are improved by modification, and vastly so. Every modification greatly changes the stats that the Product of Wisdom provides, and if you reach certain milestones, they can become downright overpowered, even becoming best in slot options in some hyper end game setup, surpassing the power of completed epics sets as a single piece of gear. Modification requires the Ancient Wisdom Remains, which drop randomly from the Guide of Wisdom. An increasing amount are required per modification rate, though as appealing as it sounds, modification is way harder than it seems. From all the way to plus 4, you could potentially lose rank on failure, and at the plus 5 and higher attempts, your gear can break outright. It's not surprising for someone to spend several hundred millions of gold on this system and then walk away with nothing. As such, it's not recommended at all to be frank considering the other options of gearing available at a fraction of the cost. This system will rear its head again with the addition of Soroka Raid, but for now, just know that Kiri manages this and it's scary. And that guys concludes all of the gear improvement systems that you should know about in 100 cap. Like I said, these are all the systems that you can use to improve and optimize your gear, but there are still a great many things that we can do to create, repurpose, and transfer gear as well that I want to talk about in the next video. As a summary of what we've discussed, well, here you go. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you nights later.